Hello. Hi, Joe. Hey, Mark. How's it going? Great. You? Pretty good. Thanks. Great. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Hello. All right. So we're just waiting for everybody to join. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. Okay. So looks like we have a full class right now. Perfect. So my name's Joe, and Today we're going to be talking about websites that are useful for learning languages um, and we're also going to be talking about just websites in general and hopefully you, you guys are going to become aware of a few websites that can help you in learning English or any lang other languages that you're learning. So before we begin, um, i just like to have everybody introduce themselves so I'll start and all you have to say is your name and what country you're from. So my name is Joe, and I'm from the United States, from a state called Arizona. So we'll start from the left. We have Daniel. Or actually, sorry, Ahmed. Ahmed. Hello. Where are you from? From Palestine. From Palestine. OK, cool. Uh, Daniel. Hi everybody, I'm Daniel, I'm from Spain, from Canary Island. Island. From the Canary Islands, ah, okay, cool. From Canary Islands. Cool. Okay, uh, Eduardo? Can you hear us, Eduardo? Okay. Sounds like somebody has the Verblink chat box open, so I'm just going to remind you guys, make sure if you look up, you have the Verblink tab or the Verblink window closed, because otherwise you'll pick up the background noise of the video. Okay, sounds like it's gone. Okay, um, Jana? Hello, uh, my name is Jana, and I come from Slovakia. From where? Slovakia. Slovakia. Okay, cool. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Eduardo, can you hear us? Okay, Mark. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Mark and I'm from Serbia. Cool. Welcome, Mark. Thanks. Max? Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm from Turkey. Turkey. Okay, cool. Uh, Miguel? Hello, everyone. Uh oh. Hello, I'm Miguel, and I'm from Colombia. From Colombia. Okay, cool. Uh, Rodrigo. Rodrigo, can you hear us? Okay, Rodrigo sounds like he's having microphone issues. Um, Yulia? Yulia. Yulia, okay. Yes, hello. Uh, my name is Yulia. I am from Lviv, Western Ukraine. Western Ukraine. Lviv, Western Ukraine. Yulia, okay. Okay, cool. Welcome. All right. Um, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Am mine? Are you there? Okay, it sounds like he cannot hear us. Okay, so that's everybody. Okay, cool. Glad you're all here today. So, <clears throat> looks like we have somebody new. Luis? Can you hear us, Luis? No? Okay. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is first we're going to focus on websites that will help you guys um, <clears throat> in learning English or learning any other languages that you're learning. So, <clears throat> before we begin, do you guys, what are the issues that you guys have with learning English? Practice. Practicing. Speak, practicing speaking, speaking and listening? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> any other problems? 
pronunciation. No. Pronunciation, good. Anything else? Um, grammar. Grammar. Okay, good, good, good. Fluency. Fluency. Uh huh. Good. Okay. So, um, first we'll focus on speaking and listening. So for speaking and listening. Verbling is going to be the best tool out there for you because you're going to be able to speak to natives and you're going to practice listening and speaking. So right now in this class, you guys are all listening to me as I talk and then when you respond, you're practicing listening. So that's one way to practice listening and speaking. <clears throat> Another way for listening um, specifically is to watch TV shows. So what you're going to want to do, the best thing to do is to find a TV show. Um, maybe if you're interested in learning American English, find an American TV show. If you're interested in f learning British English, find a British TV show. So find a TV show that you can watch online for free, um, legally, um, so that it might be on YouTube or something, or Netflix, or um, any other services that offer TV shows for a charge. So what you're going to want to do is find a TV show and you're going to want to start from the beginning of season one and then follow that TV show. So I don't know how much time you guys have that you can devote to practicing English, but what you're going to want to do is try and watch the minimum, I would say, is one episode of your TV show per week. So that's what I'm doing with Spanish, and I would recommend you guys do with English. But if you can do more than one per week, then do more than one. But that's going to help the most with listening because <clears throat> the the TV show is going to use different kinds of vocabulary so you'll learn new vocabulary you'll practice listening because you're <clears throat> that's just an aspect of watching the TV show listening watching and you're gonna have to follow the TV show so you're gonna have to follow it from episode 1 to episode 2 to 3 to 4 so you're gonna have to continuously be paying attention to understand what's going on in the story so because of that um, you're going to have to focus more on listening and watching and following the story. So that's going to help it a lot. Um, so that's one way with listening and maybe learning new vocabulary. So Salvador brought up a good point. What about movies? So movies are good too, but the, the difference between movies and TV shows is that movies are you know an hour, hour and a half long, and that's one whole story and so you have to be paying attention the whole time and also they're probably going to be very speaking very fast so it might be difficult too so I would definitely recommend starting with TV shows and then trying to move on to movies after you've practiced a lot because movies like it's the same thing for me learning a language movies are still very difficult so if you follow the TV show practice listening then you'll get better and better another thing too that I've done that's helped me when learning a language is <clears throat> in the beginning before verbling classes I used to speak on just the verbling partners the friends one-to-one -one, or one-on-one -on -one, and I would try and practice with lots of people so if I go on and I say I'm going to speak on Verbling for an hour then I try and speak to one person for 10 minutes so five minutes in my language five minutes in their language or the language that I'm practicing then switch because then after you switch your ears have to adjust to this new person's accent this new person's um, you know form of talking their their uh, their diction, their their way of speaking. So that's going to help too because your ears are constantly going to have to adjust. Because if you speak on verbling for 60 minutes, you're going to speak to, if you speak for 10 minutes per person, then you're going to speak to at least 10 people. So then um, you're going to have to, your ears are going to have to adjust. So those are just a few ways with listening. Does, any, does anybody have any questions? Yes, uh, the, do you watch? O only one uh, Spanish e episode per week uh, do you repeat it or yeah so yeah what I do is that's a good question mark thanks so what I do is I'm watching the Spanish TV show and what I do is I watch one episode per week and sometimes I write down like I'll write down in Spanish what's happening in the in the telenovela or in the TV series 
-hmm. And then that helps too. So I'm watching, I'm listening, and then I'm writing down what's happening in Spanish. Yes. And so I never watch the same episode again because, um, I don't know, I just think that you should try and, even though you may not understand everything, you can watch the episode again if you want to try and understand everything better. But what I try and do is understand what I can and then I kind of have to pay more attention because I have to remember what happened because I've only watched the episode once. Mm -hmm. And um, then it just kind of helps me practice listening more. But that was a good question. Actors. Actresses. What was that? Um, uh, in an uh, episode, there are a lot of different act actors and actresses. Uh -huh. Yes, that's true. So that's also why it's going to help because um, you're going to be listening to lots of different kinds of people. And so it's going to be good too because the main characters in the TV show, you're going to get used to hearing those um you're going to get used to hearing their voices and their, uh, I don't know, their, their idioms, their vocabulary, uh, maybe the verbs, the nouns they use. You're going to be practicing listening to them. So you're going to basically be learning how to listen and understand them and then you can apply that to, um, to like real conversation because they're going to be talking basically using what are called colloquium terms. So that's terms that you use just in regular conversation. So that's going to help a lot. Um, somebody else said talk shows. Yes, those help too. There's a thing called TED Talks, and those are just talk shows by uh, people who have had, um, I don't know, special experiences and who want to share their experiences with other people. So if you Google that, you can... Um, watch those as well and those will help too. Um, is it useful to use, so somebody said, Rafat said, is it useful to use English subtitles with the episode? So in my opinion I think no because um, let's say for example uh, you go to another country and you're watching TV in that country's language you're most likely not going to have subtitles so I think it's just important to try and focus more on listening and not try and show the subtitles because then you're paying more attention to listening because when you're speaking to somebody, like right now when I'm speaking, there are no English subtitles running. So it might be good if you're like a if you're a very if you're a beginner of a new language, so if you decide to learn a new language, I would say use subtitles because it's your first language and you don't even know how the language is written. But if you're an intermediate, like you, most of you guys, then I would say don't use subtitles. Um, what do you think about podcasts? Podcasts. Podcasts are good. So um, that's only audio, so that's good too because you have to focus on the audio. So radio, podcasts, all of that you don't have pictures. But I would say, so if you're at the intermediate level, so you have the intermediate level, the lower intermediate level and the higher intermediate level. If you're at the lower intermediate level, you might want to use subtitles so that you can um, obtain a, a higher level. But if you're at the intermediate level, don't use subtitles. But if you're at the higher intermediate level, I would say use podcasts because TV shows are going to be easier because you're going to see a picture, you're going to see images, so you're going to be able to associate those words, those actions with those pictures. So that's going to help. So I would say TV series, then podcasts. But yeah, that's a good question. Like BBC uh, Radio, somebody sorry. recommended. Uh, sorry, uh, you mean uh, if you are uh, podcast, uh, you won't uh, use uh, no subtitle uh, if you are <coughs> intermediate or higher? Right. Yeah, so if, yeah. if you're lower intermediate and you're still having difficulty listening, like right now if, if I'm speaking too fast for you, then you might want to try subtitles on the TV shows or just TV in general. But yeah. 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 So by the time uh, maybe you heard the effortless English uh, and the real uh, power English, uh, the AJ, uh, AJ is the creator of this uh, program. Uh, what do you think of this podcast and uh, audios AJ's program? AJ's program. I've never. I don't. I've never heard of that. But um, 
if 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 you think it I mean it's hard to ju it's hard for me to judge if those are good or not I mean as long as you're listening to somebody you know talk or converse in English then that's going to help you um, yeah. songs will help too you can listen to music um, because you know songs are catchy and they're very short so if you listen to them a lot of times you're going to pick up phrases and words from them so that's another good way to practice for listening uh, but according to the effortless English system, if you want to be, uh, if you want to be uh, r real original uh, American uh, people, if you if you want to talk uh, like this, uh, you have to you have to obey these uh, rules and to listen every day um, uh, along the six months, and you will get better more, and you you uh, you will able to uh, speak like native speaker. That's true. I mean, because when you listen, um, you're going to listen to things so many times. And when you hear, so let's say you hear the phrase, um, like this phrase, um, what are you doing? So, for example, if you hear that phrase from an English native speaker, then you hear it multiple times, then your brain's going to recognize that phrase. So when it sees it, it's going to notice that when you read it, you say, what are you doing? But in talk, people are going to say, or in conversation, people are going to say, what are you doing? So that's the difference between pronouncing it, what are you doing? Or what are you doing? Which is the more natural way. So that's true. If you do listen every day, I'm sure you will get a lot better. But um, I mean, it depends on your level to know how much you need to listen to get a lot better. So like for people who are more advanced, you might you might want to listen to say an hour of audio in English versus if you're a beginner, um, you know, 10 minutes a day might be might improve your listening abilities by a lot. Yeah, that's right. It's depend on your ability, your skill, but uh, you're, uh, uh, he advise you if if, if somebody uh, who uh, try to learn this system, just learn uh, phrases, uh, not uh, words, not uh, low, uh, short uh, short words, just long sentences, phrases. Uh, not and uh, here uh, doesn't recommend uh, not try to memorize words, just uh, all. Phrases. Yes, I, I think uh, that uh, AJ uh, Hodge uh, has uh, one hour of mini stories uh, where uh, he uh, tell a story, and um, when, when he finish, he ask a question, a uh, um, uh, quick question, in which you should uh, answer a phrase uh, one or two. I, I think that uh, he means that. Yes. I th I think Max. so. Yeah. Max, yes, yes. can you hear Mark? Yeah, okay, uh, uh, okay, okay, continue, John. Okay, <laughs> sorry. Okay, no, no, no. Thank you for saying that, Mark. Yeah, of course. Um, so somebody, Jorge, also brought up a um, a useful tool. What do you, What do I think about reading books in English? So, um, it depends. I mean, if you want to get better at reading English then um, I would say read books. You're going to learn new vocabulary. You're going to learn the grammar better. You're going to learn new words and new phrases from books. So you could read books. You could also read um, uh, like uh, newspaper. You could read the newspaper, read, read news articles. That would help too. Um, books. Yeah, you could also listen to books. But reading books is mostly going to focus on vocabulary and everything. Um, Tarek brought up a good point. I think this site needs a phonetics teacher. Yes, I think a class on phonetics would help. Um, I'll see if maybe I can do that in the future because if you learn the phonetics of the English language, so like for example the sounds, phonetics just means the sounds of the English language, then you'll learn how to read and you can read out loud and you'll le learn how to pronounce things. But another good thing for phonetics or for learning, for improving pronunciation is a website I'm going to share with you guys. So I'm going to pull it up on my uh, screen so you guys can see because this site is very, very, very useful. 
because English, some English words are very difficult to pronounce. So can everybody see this? Yes. Okay, so this site is called Fordivo.com. So right here, this is the home page, and you click right here where it says languages. Then they're ordered by popularity. So we have German, English, Russian, uh, Tatar, Portuguese. So right here, you're going to click on English. Then um, right here, you just see top pronunciations. You see new words for pronouncing. So the way it works is say you don't know how to pronounce this word. So you know how it spells, but you don't know how it's pronounced. So you're going to type it in on the search box, then it's going to come up with the results. So you click on it, then you click play right here, which I don't think you guys will be able to hear me. I'll, I'll share the, I'll post the, or I'll paste the link right here for you guys. Um, but what what happens is somebody, so it says a female from the United States, so a female from the United States pronounced this word and recorded it for us to hear. So if you click play, you hear her pronounce the word, comprise. So that's how that works. So you, it has, I mean, thousands, hundreds of thousands of words. So you can type in any word. Um, I don't know, vulnerable. Let's see. So you type in words, and sometimes they have multiple pronunciations. Um, like here, we have a female from the United States, a male from Mexico, and a male from the United States. So you can listen to all of them and listen how that word is pronounced. So that helps too. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions about that that site? Yeah. Uh, what about collocations? What about what? Col uh, col collocations. Collocations. Uh, the group words, the group, the group of words is going well with each other. Col col collocations. I think my pronunciation is wrong. Can you can you write the word for me, please, uh, on I the chat? Uh, Co-location. Okay, thank you, Darren Mliff. Yeah, so slang. So do you mean slang, Wolfie? No, I'm not talking about slang. Wait, I'm trying to. Okay. Can you repeat the site, website? It's, yeah, here, I'll write it for you. It's called fordvo.com. So it's F O R. VO.com. Joe. Yes. Joey? Question. Um, about about reading. When Re I'm reading something out loud and I don't know how to pronounce a word, what do I, what do I have to do? Um, what you have to do. So that's where English phonetics would help. Um. I mean, because it's it gets difficult to say because, like for me, when I le the way I learned English and how I learned to read and stuff like that, I remember in school, the teachers would tell us to to read the words out loud and to pronounce them. So, um, <clears throat> let, here I'm just going to show you with an example. Um, this would take lots of practice, I think. I don't know how it would work because um, I'm I'm a native speaker. So, right here I might say like. I'm gonna zoom in on the, these this sentence. Um, so if you scroll over here, so like for example this word, person. So the way I might have learned how to read that, if if I saw this and I saw one, and then I was wasn't sure how to pronounce this word, I might the the way that I learned was per you you pronounce it in um, the syllable. So person, or you try and take a guess at it. Person, so try and do that. Try and um, like right here, like pronoun pronounce, pronounce. So it's you kind of have to try and read it as best as you can. But if that's very difficult for you, then instead of um, pronouncing it incorrectly, I might look up the word. So you might want to sit by your computer and read the book and go to fordvo.com and then type in the words that you don't know <clears throat> or 
Another thing you might want to do is look for an audio book. Because if you get a book and then you get an audio book or a CD with the audio book, then you can follow along with the person reading the story. So then if you do that, then you'll hear them pronounce each word and then you can memorize how they're pronounced for when you're reading on your own. Okay. Uh, but you said about syllables because you, you so, pronounce saying the syllables. Mm -hmm. uh, do, do you know uh, do you know any website that teach the the syllables of a word? Um, because we don't because we don't learn about it about syllables yeah. when we are learning English. Okay, well, so this these are what syllables are. So syllables are the sounds of words, so they they break it up. So like um um so let's try the word hamburger. So the syllable, if you broke it up in, in this in the syllables, it would be like ham, burger, like that. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Hamburger. So you're breaking up the words into how it's pronounced. Um, <clears throat> so it would probably there's probably a way. There's this website that I can recommend to you that I was trying to. Um, you I used in another class. I'm going to post it. Um, I'm going to I'm going to look it up real quick because I I lost the link. Uh, it's called I typed in like English pron pronunciation guide. Pronunciation guide. Um, so let's see. Sorry, one sec. And, and so then, yes, question. Look at the, I, I write it collocations. Can you see it now? Uh, yeah. Sorry, one sec. I'm just trying to find this website. Uh, here's here's a guide to phonetics. That's what this page is called. And so what it does is it <clears throat> points out all of the sounds in the English language and then it gives you an example. So here I'm going to paste it for you. Collocation. Yes, yes. Um collocation, hold on. Uh, what do you mean by collocation? I wrote in the. Uh, no, I I know what the word is. I'm just asking, like, what can you ask the question is a, again? Is a, is a group of words. Is a is a is a like pattern, a phrase. Pattern, like a pattern pattern. Like a like a collection of words, maybe. Uh, Matt, was that Max that was asking the question? Who was asking the question? Or Wolfie? But I'm writing book. But okay. Yeah. So Tarek brought up a good point. You can't learn all the syllables of every word. That would be very difficult. Um, <clears throat> so you want to learn the phonetics. And the phonetics, what it means is, so when you see, I don't know, like an A next to a T or something like that, you learn how that sound is pronounced. So you might want to look over this, the, <clears throat> the guy that I provided you guys. Um, and it also has audio pronunciations. So if you click on the, the sounds, then you can hear the words pronounced. So here, I'll put it together. Collocation defines a sequence of words or terms that co-occur more often than would be expected by chance. In phraseology, collocation is a subtype of phrase. The two verses usually go, go together. The words that usually go together. I'm like trying a, to... Can you give me an example? I'm trying, or actually, I'm going to look up an example. Because I, I know what you're talking about, I just need an example. I think uh, congregation is the uh, most difficult word uh, for pronunciation. I yeah. think it is like um, kind of synonym words that you can use you know, to define a noun, like a strong T, a powerful T. It, but you know, I think it is kind of a very deep uh, Grammar, so uh -huh. it would be like. I kind of oh, okay, okay, okay. I found I found some examples. So here, I'm gonna 
post this link so that everybody can see. So this is what I'm looking at right now. I, I just found that on the internet. So, <clears throat> so these kind of look like phrasal verbs to me, but I guess they're different. Colocationless. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so colocation. do business, do nothing, do someone a favor, do the cooking, do the housework. These are things that you're probably you can either try and memorize them, but these are things when you're yeah I forgot who said it, but when you're at a more advanced level. So. I think uh, it's a, it, they, it, they make them your song is more ma natural, I think. They uh, what? Make, it, they make you s they make you speak more naturally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. What I'm talking about. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um. So the way. Um. The the way that you're probably going to learn those is you can either try memorizing them, but I think the best way is to just speak with a native speaker and they're going to use them and <clears throat> you're going to subconsciously remember them or or learn them so I think the best way is probably to speak to natives I mean the, the you can learn so much on your own and like become really proficient but if you really want to attain fluency in the language then, um, speaking from my opinion, I think that you need to go to the country and live there and <clears throat> surround yourself, like basically submerse, submerge yourself, submerse yourself in the culture. Yeah, and use it every day. Exactly, when you use it every day, like when you're speaking, you know, and somebody says like, oh, are you going to have a shower? Are you going to take a shower? Then you're going to learn that take a shower, take a shower, take a shower. So it's, I mean, you can try and learn them by memorizing them and then using them in conversation. But the best way is probably going to be um, <clears throat> like living in that country and becoming fluent. So yeah, so that's one site. Um, another site that I can recommend to you guys for writing is called, I've never used it. But I've heard about it some, from some people on on uh, Verbling. It's called Lang8.com. Mm -hmm. So here I'm gonna write it for you guys. Uh, it's this is a link for it. Lang8.com. So what I understand from it is you write in the language that you're learning. So it's it, it explains it right here. Um, here I'll pull it up just in case anybody can't see. So you write in the language that you're learning and basically somebody corrects you. Um, I don't know if it's free but uh, it seems like a really cool site and it's a good way to get maybe your essays or um, anything else you've written to be corrected by a native speaker. So that might be a good tool if you're practicing writing in the language that you're learning. Um, okay, does anybody um, have any questions about that website or anything else? Yeah, I, uh, I want this a question. Yes. Uh, do you recommend us to uh, studying grammar rules? Uh, if you are uh, intermediate or uh, higher? Uh, that's a good question. Good question, Max. So, I mean, it depends. Like, for example, it depends on how you learn. Like, some people, the way they learn English is they'll listen to songs, watch movies, watch TV shows, and then basically they learn it <clears throat> kind of the more natural way. They learn it as if they... Um, they didn't take a class, they don't learn the grammar, they don't learn translating or anything. They just pick it up from listening and um, basically images, yeah, with images I, and everything. So, I, yeah? I hate the grammar. You hate the grammar. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I don't, like, I don't like grammar either. It's difficult. I mean, you could try and learn grammar. I mean, I would only focus on grammar if you have a problem with it. If you're speaking and somebody is correcting you constantly on something, then I would go back and learn the grammar for that. 
but it depends. It depends. I mean, like for, for me, for example, um, there are certain verb tenses that I have trouble with in Spanish. And so what I do is sometimes I'll go look at examples and then I'll also go look in grammar. But um, I mean, it depends on what you're having trouble with in grammar. If you're having trouble with like conjugating verbs, then I would go back and practice and look at grammar and see how it's done. But um, if not, if you're only having like few minor errors, then I would not look at grammar. I would just try practicing more. Does that does that answer your question, Max? Uh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, okay. but you 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 advised us uh, uh, watch uh, talk shows, uh, mm -hmm. and you you don't rec recommend us uh, watching movies because of very difficult to understand. Movies are definitely for the more advanced learners. Um, yeah, def exactly what I said. Yeah, so l maybe watch some. A TV show would be good to get up to that advanced level. Um, movies will help in the in the very future, like when you're really trying to um, attain fluency. Uh, but it's a, it just depends on your level. So I would start out with TV shows, start out with basic videos. Maybe watch videos of uh, TV shows will help because it, it's just all conversation and it's a story. So that will help too. It's TV uh, shows Jane. and movies. Is what was that? Uh, TV shows and movies is more natural, but we can see in movies and TV shows uh, there are a lot of... Uh, 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 we can't. I mean, we can't see in, in movies and TV shows is a correct correct grammar. Is a, uh, also, you know what I mean? Yes, I know, I know exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it's more casual. Grammar is not. Yeah, more casual. The grammar is. I think it's not so important. Yeah. So when you're mm -hmm. watching TV shows and movies, you're probably going to pick up grammar, but it's going to be very subtle. So like for example, you're just going to hear people say things and you're just going to know in your head that's the way you say it, but you're not going to know why. Yeah, because I mean in the TVs, TV shows and movies is people don't use the correct grammar also. Yeah, that's true. I mean, a, I mean a lot of people don't use correct English grammar. I mean, for example, yeah. the most common one um, is if you're going to say, like if you say like, hey, how are you? Most people say, I'm good, how are you? But you're not supposed to use good because good's an adjective. You're supposed to say, I'm well, because well is an adverb and it describes um, how you are, like the verb. So that's just a most common example. I mean, I even say, I'm good, just because it sounds more natural. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it sounds okay to me, but technically, like grammatically, it's incorrect. So that that's just um, one example. I mean, you can say either one and people will understand you. It just it's just one of those little things. And when you say I'm fine, is it is it different to you? Fine is okay too. Like I think fine is grammatically correct. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but when when someone says like, "Oh, I'm fine. How are you?" That sounds natural to me. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I can ask. Can I ask? Of course. Um, what is the best way uh, to improve our vocabulary skills? What do you offer? Um, yeah, so there's another website. That's a good question. Um, I'm just answering a question real quick on the chat. Um, here we go. Okay. So yeah, there's another website, another, it's a program actually, it's free. Um, so I'm going to share my screen with you guys. And I'm going to show you. Especially uh, daily uh, English uh, words. Yes. Daily, daily English words. words. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll give you two things of advice. So if you want to learn vocabulary, um, this program is very, very useful. It's called Anki. And it's a program which it's it's basically flashcards. Let's see if I can pull it mm -hmm. up. Um, I have it on my computer, so 
I'm just going to screen share again and show you what it looks like. Um, so if I pull this up, it's going to look like this. So I was using it for Spanish. So I click on my deck of cards. You download these deck of cards that have lists of vocabulary and they're free. So then you click study now. So then it says the word. Then um, you click, like you, you see the word, you click show answer. So then you memorize. So it's just memorizing it. And then you can say like, oh, I want to see it again or I don't want to see it. So then to visit. So visitar. So that's, that's one way to learn vocabulary. Um, then another way, like you said, you said daily words. Yes, um, yes. Daily words, you're definitely, for daily words, you're definitely going to want to read the newspaper or read news articles because they're going to be using a lot of daily words. When you say daily words, do you mean daily conversation words or do you mean words that are used? Um, uh, I mean uh, daily conversation uh, words. Daily especially. conversation uh, daily conversation words. Then I would definitely listen, or definitely listen to a talk show, talk show or talk radio, or newspaper, or newspaper. Yeah, if if you want to learn new vocabulary that's used in conversation, listen to talk show, and try and listen for new words. Um, also, yeah, reading newspaper will help. Not reading yeah. newspaper doesn't help you to. Uh, I mean for your speaking because newspaper yeah. use the formal language I have very formal language they use very formal language if you use that kind of language in the streets yeah someone uh, laughing you maybe I don't know something like that yeah you, you yeah that, that, that's a good point that's a very good point um, so yeah when you read newspaper they're probably going to use a lot bigger terms but not all of it is formal I mean some of it's going to be formal but um yeah, it depends on the newspaper. It if depends on the newspaper that, too. If if it is double book, double book, yeah. Yeah, like Yahoo News might be good um, for starting out, and then maybe try the New York Times. I mean, it just depends. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I want to mention about my uh, other way uh, studying uh, okay. program. Um, uh, you know the Penguin Reader's uh, story book? I've uh, heard of the Penguin. Yeah. 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 Uh, every time I read, uh, I read uh, this story book. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, uh, I listen to the voice while I'm reading the story. I repeat uh, again and again uh, while uh, he's playing uh, at the background. And you do that with what, what kind of, they're called the Penguin Club books, right? Yeah, Penguin uh, history books. Uh, while uh, he was uh, playing at the background, and uh, the uh, comment, uh, the uh, the uh, and the uh, and the read the book uh, with voice, and also uh, meanwhile uh, I read the book. Uh, I read the books loudly. Uh huh. That's yeah. That's that's a very good point. Yeah. So at if the you same time. Yeah, this, that's what I actually did that with Spanish too. So, um, yeah, what you do is you have the book in front of you and you download the audio CD and then you follow along with a person reading the book. That will help a lot too. That's a good way to learn vocabulary, learn pronunciation, practice listening, and practice reading. Uh -huh. Also, uh, Daniel posted a link for us. So yes. I'm going to pull that up for you guys to see. Um, I think it's BBC, and um, so it's just some grammar, some English lessons, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation. So these might be good too. Um, I'm not sure what else is on here, but yeah, I would definitely check this out. Thanks, Daniel. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go through, show you guys a few more websites. Um, let's see. Somebody mentioned Live Mocha on the chat, which Live Mocha, I'm not a very big fan of Live Mocha. You have to pay for it, and it, it's it's good if you're learning grammar, but not if you want to practice. If you want to learn grammar from the very beginning, 
I might check out Live Mocha because it's got a good process for doing that, uh, or good strategy. But if you want to practice, then I would definitely use Verblink. But there's that. Um, what else? There's a blog. Somebody mentioned blog. There's one called Fluent in Three Months. Has anybody ever heard of it? Yeah, Benny the. Um, yeah. Benny the Irish guy. <laughs> yeah, the Irish guy. Yeah, he speaks like a ton of languages. Yeah. Um, that's a good blog too. I check that out sometimes because he's got a lot of, of uh, useful sites. Max said, um, "Where can you find audiobooks?" Um, I'm not sure on, on that, Max. I don't know of any um, sites where you can find audiobooks, but you might just want to type in like "free audiobooks online," and I'm sure you'll be able to find a site. But sometimes when you purchase books, they come with CDs. Uh, like you might want to check Amazon for that. EnglishCafe.org. I don't know what that is. Um, has anybody heard of EnglishCafe.org? No. Yes. No. Yes, okay. I have. Okay, I'm not sure what that is, uh, but Jorge recommended that. Uh, some other sites that I might recommend. Oh, this other one. Very cool site. I like it a lot. It's called Duolingo. Has anybody ever heard of it? What? No. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. Yeah. Here, I'm gonna write it real quick. Duolingo.com. And oh no, I don't know why. Okay, here we go. Duolingo. So this is a really cool site too. Um so as you can see I have mine open because I was learning a little bit of Portuguese with it. Um but they have it for I'm going to double check just to make sure because um, they have it if you speak Italian and they have it if you speak Portuguese and they have it if you speak Spanish. So um, I'm thinking they're coming out with more languages. But the way it works is you start it at the very beginning um, and so these are what the lessons look like. So like they'll say, they'll pronounce a picture or I mean they'll pronounce a word, they'll show a picture. So I think the word here is man. And so then it gives you the article, and then you type in the word, then you check it and go on. So it's really cool for learning vocabulary. Um, and then once you get farther down, you learn verbs too. So it's a cool website um, for learning languages too. So um, yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Um, let's see. What else is there? Another website that is not necessarily for learning languages, but that might help you with taking notes for languages, is this website that I love, that I use to take notes all the time. It's called workflowy.com. So I'm going to show you guys. Has anybody ever heard of that? No. No. Okay. No. So this is what it looks like. It's basically for taking notes for making lists. So as you can see, um, I have three things, personal, work, life, mission. So then I can expand them. So if I click on um, work, then I have verbling. And so you can expand and collapse lists. So it's a really good way to learn something. So right here I have just some notes on English lessons. So you click on them and then if you want them, if you want to focus on something, um, what you can do is like, let's say I want to just go to English lessons. Click on it, it becomes bigger. And then you can always go back up here. So it's really cool. Um, so let's see. I did one on film shots today, and I just provided the links right there. Um, phrasal verbs. So it's just a cool way to take notes. I definitely recommend it to you guys. Um, let's see. I think I was using it uh, for my Spanish class. So I'll show you the, those real quick. So like right here. This was for chapter 9 in my book. So it's just a good way to organize your notes. Um, I was learning about vowels and, and stress and pronunciation and stuff. So that's just a really cool website for taking notes. And it's free too. Can you share your uh, its link? Yes. So um, I'll put it up here again too. Workflowy.com. So, W O R K F L O W Y.com. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Yeah. So, um, that's that. Um, we have eight more minutes. 
I'm trying to think of any other websites that might be. Do you guys have any questions about anything? I have. Um, I don't know if you know, but um, like, do you know about intonation in in a language and stress word? Did you say annotation? Intonation. 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 Um, yeah, stress. So yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, so that's for example, like when I say, like when you say a question, like, oh, where did you go to the store? Or, or not? That was a bad question. Um, when did you go to the store? So you could either say like, when did you go to the store, or you could say, when did you go to the store? So it's kind of um, stressing. Uh, different words in the sentence like when did you get back so like usually in questions I think you stress the first word so like when where how like how did you do that or you might say like I'm going to the store see it's just a lot of that has to do with um other languages too like French and Spanish because you the question is written the same way as the uh, as the sentence when you read it. Um, tools for practicing that, I would say just common conversation because that's another way to become fluent or sound fluent in a language. You just have to practice. So when you're pronouncing things, try to pronounce them in the way that everybody else is pronouncing them, that the native speakers are pronouncing them. Um, that's the best tool for doing that. I'm, I can't think of any other websites or tools I don't know of any that might help. Does anybody else know of any? Does anybody else have any tips for that? Okay, um, somebody recommended a website, teacherluke.podmatic. I'm going to pull up the site and see what this is real quick. Uh, so here's another site for British English. It's in the chat. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's called Teacher Luke Podmatic. Um, <clears throat> so another thing, when you're learning English, you're learning new vocabulary, make sure that you're learning one type of English. So don't try and use British English with American English because if you mix them, people are going to be very confused. Um, it's important, maybe if you're going to travel, it's important to know both. Um, like that's what I try and do with Spanish. I try and learn words that are used in different countries so that if I'm talking to somebody from Spain, I'll use words that they'll understand. Or if I'm talking to somebody from Mexico, I'll use words that they understand. So um, that's, that's another good way to become fluent or, or try and become fluent, become more proficient. That's Marcus brought up another good point. Um, intonation. So there's a thing called parodying or shadowing. So what you do is maybe when you're watching a TV show or um, yeah, if you're watching a TV show, try and pause it um, and listen to it over and over again and then try and repeat what the, the native speaker is saying. So then that way you can repeat it and repeat it in the same and stress the same words that that person's repeating. He recommended a good site. It's called, um, I'm going to pull it up real quick um, so that you guys can see. It's called uh, the Foreign Language Center. Okay. I'm not sure how this site works. Let's see. Let's Listening. Um, oh, okay. These are all lessons. So these are lessons. So I guess you can listen to lessons in here so um, that might be a cool website to check out I'll recommend the link or I mean I'll paste the link again um, but yeah so what you're gonna wanna do is just try and watch a TV show and when you're watching it try and pause it and if there's a phrase that you don't understand or you didn't hear very well pause it listen to it again and then try and repeat it and when you repeat phrases that are used commonly in conversation then you're going to sound more natural and you're going to sound more like a native speaker. Um, somebody else recommended one English Ingvid. Um, okay so this is a guy who teaches lessons on YouTube. I've seen him before. Um, I'll share it with you guys real quick. Ingvid. So pronunciation. So um, he has a lot of lessons. So right here you have topics. Uh, teachers, okay, 
So these are just English video lessons. So these might help too. Um, but yeah, there's that. Uh, does anybody else have any other questions? We have three minutes left. No? Okay. Um, yeah, so if you're working on your listening, I would definitely say watch a TV show. Find a TV show that you like and focus on it. And try and watch at least an episode a week. If you can watch more, watch more. If you need to practice speaking, use Verbling. Come to these classes. Speak. If you're afraid to speak, maybe go do the one-on-one, -on -one, the friends feature, so that you get some practice speaking with a native speaker. And just remember that everybody else here is learning English too, so um, nobody's an expert. I mean, I'm still learning how to pronounce new words every day. I mean, English is a difficult language, and there are a lot of words that look like they're pronounced this way, but they're actually pronounced another way. So um, don't let that stop you from learning English. Definitely just practice and move forward with the language. Okay. And then for reading, definitely try and read news articles. Those will help learning vocabulary, um, just practicing reading. Read out loud too. Reading out loud will help pronunciation and it will help speaking too because when you read things out loud, then when you say them, they'll come off more natural. Um, so it looks like we have one minute left. Does anybody have any last questions? Anything? Uh, for example, yo, yes. uh, what kind of show do you recommend? Um, I would recommend a show that's pretty popular. I mean, it depends on what you like, honestly. Yeah. Um, I would say, like there's a show called that, that some of my friends watch that re they really like. So if you want to watch something that you know other people watch and that's not just specifically for learning English, then I would watch a show called How I Met Your Mother. It's yeah. to, it's it's really funny. I've never seen it, but I've I, heard I that watch it uh, in Spanish. It's great. Oh, you, you watch it in Spanish? Wow. Como conocí a vuestra madre. <laughs> yes. Ah, okay. That's awesome. That's really cool, Mark. Yeah, so um, How I Met Your Mother, I guess they have it in Spanish too, so um, yeah. watch that. Um, there's also a show that a lot of people enjoy called Breaking Bad. Exactly. So Mark has brought up a good point. He recommends doing what you enjoy. So if you enjoy you know, watching a TV show, then do that. If you enjoy watching movies, they're going to be more difficult, but definitely do that. Watch movies if that's what you enjoy doing. Um, okay. Yeah, so just, just try and find something that you're interested in. The more you're interested in it, the more you're going to want to do it rather than doing it just to learn English. You're going to, um, like How I Met Your Mother, you'll probably laugh a lot. So um, yeah. definitely check out uh, some cool TV shows for listening. Um, all right, guys. Well, that's the end of this class. Thank you all for coming. I hope that helps. And if you have any questions, there's a, I made a Facebook page so that you guys can ask me questions or um, suggest anything. I'm going to pull it up real quick just so you guys can um, see it. Um, it's also on my profile on on Verbling, but uh, here it is. It's uh, I just made it, so I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, hold on one sec. Joe Previtt. Okay. Um, sorry. Hold on one sec. I forgot the link. Here we go. So this is it. So where's the Google? Here we go. So it's www.facebook.com slash Joe Verbling. So if you have any suggestions for any future classes or if you have any questions or comments about anything we talked about in class or if you're just learning English and you need help and you have a question, feel free to post on that page and I will answer it as soon as I can. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, John. Uh -huh. Of course. See you guys later. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.